Yo yo, welcome to lesson 23. So far, we covered how to build a website with HTML. However, our website looks kind of boring. So today, we're going to learn how to spice it up and make it look fun. Before we get started, I just want to let you know that building websites and styling it are two different things. So please don't feel bad if your website looks terrible. Our goal in this bootcamp is to build functional websites that can do useful things. Of course, we don't want it to look ugly, but we do want to make sure that it looks presentable. So my goal is to teach you the basics of how to style your website. There is no right or wrong way to do it. Styling is basically a art, and I want you to be the artist. So feel free to let your creativity take over. If you're not good at styling, don't worry. This is why companies spend a lot of money to hire designers. And as software engineers, they don't expect us to come up with really good designs. Anyways, let's get started. Here is a basic HTML from our previous lesson. I just removed the stuff that isn't necessary for today's lesson. So first, let's create a h1 tag, h1, and let's put hello world. And then now let's close the tag, and now let's click run. And here, as you can see, we see hello world. So the easiest way to apply styling to an HTML tag is with the style property. So all we have to do is add style here, and put an equal sign, and then add two quotation marks. So inside the quotation marks, we want to provide the style that we want to apply. Let's start by setting the color. So all we have to do is type color and then add a colon and then we provide a color. So let's put red and now let's click run. And now as you can see, our text is red. So you can kind of think of this as a dictionary where we provide a key value pair to style the tag. So in this case, the color is the key and red is the value. If we want to add another style, all we have to do is add a semicolon after the key value pair. And then all we have to do is add the next property. So now let's change the alignment of the text and set it to center. So all we have to do is type text dash align, and then we put the colon, and then we put center. And now let's click run. And here, as you can see, our text is red and also centered. This looks great, and it's super simple to do. Now let's add a paragraph tag underneath the hello world. So hit enter, and then type P, and then let's type my name is Vincent. And then close the tag, and now let's click run. And cool, now we have hello world and my name is Vincent. So if we want to apply the same style, all we have to do is just copy it. So let's copy the style from hello world and paste it onto the P tag. And now let's run our code. Cool, now both tags have the same styling. Now what if we want to change the text to blue? This is pretty straightforward. All we have to do is change red to blue in these two spots. And now let's click run and now we have it in blue. But what if we had a very large website with over thousands of tags inside it? This would take a lot of effort to change and it is also very error prone. For example, we could forget to update one of them and our website will look super weird. So to solve this, let me introduce container tags. So basically, a container tag can contain zero or more tags. So the first one that we learned was the body tag, which contains the meat of our website. I found this picture from dev.to by this user, PolgarJ, and this image here basically illustrates what a website looks like. Uh, so first, you have a header, and inside the header, you can have a nav bar, and then you have a main, which can have a section, which can have articles. And then you can have more than one section in here. And then you can have a side, which will have multiple sections. And then finally, you can also have a footer tag. These tags are great for organizing your website. And based on the naming of the tags, this will allow other people to make assumptions on what data each container will contain. For example, if we use the footer tag, we expect it to display copyright information. So now let's go to a real website and let's see how they actually build the website. So let's go to pokemon.com. Right click the page and then click inspect. And now let's dissect the website. So let's look at the body. Inside the body, we see a lot of tags. So first we see a div, a nav tag, some more div tags, and then a footer tag. So as you can see, this Pokemon website doesn't use a lot of those tags. Rather, it uses a lot of these div tags. So basically a div tag is just a generic container and they are generally used to group elements together. And div tags are known to be block elements, which basically means that they take up the whole width of the page. And then there are also span tags, which is also a container tag, but the only difference is that it is an inline element, which means that it only takes up enough space for it to render. For example, the span tag only takes up this much space. And if we added another span tag, it will just render right beside it. But if we add another div tag, it will just take up the whole width of the page again. Cool, so let's create some divs and spans to test it out. So let's create a div and type hello, and then close the div. And for this div, let's add a style. So let's do style equals quotation marks. And then inside the quotation marks, let's add a background color. So let's do background dash color. And for my Canadian viewers, we have to remove the U from the color. And we have to do this because this is just how the key is named. So remove the U and then put a colon and now let's put red. So let's click run. 
As you can see, it says hello, and this background takes up the whole width of the page. So now let's copy this and paste it and change the div to a span. So let's change this to a span and change this to a span. And now let's click run. And here, as you can see, this hello only takes up enough space to render the hello. And now let's add a few more spans. So let's paste and paste, and now let's click run. And here, as you can see, we can fit three spans together on one line. And let's try this with the divs. So now let's copy the div and paste it a couple of times. So let's copy this and paste, paste, and now let's click run. And here, as you can see, each div took up the whole width of the page. And conversely, the spans only take up as much space as needed. So basically, the div element is a block element. Similarly, the h1 and also the p tag are also block elements. And the span tag is inline, and tags like bold and italic are also inline tags. And that's why when we put the bold and the italic tag together in the previous lesson, they all showed up on the same line. Cool, so now back on topic. So let's wrap these two tags inside a div. So let's add the div here, and then tab these two lines, and then close it with a div, and hit backspace here so that it lines up. So now we can see that this div contains the h1 and the p tag. So now let's run the code. So nothing really changed. All we did is wrap the h1 and p tag inside the div tag. So instead of adding the style to the h1 and p tag, we can actually move the style into the div tag. So let's copy this line and erase it and erase this line as well. And then now let's paste it in the div tag and now let's click run. And here, as you can see, by styling a container tag, we're able to apply the style to the children of the container tag. So basically container tags allow us to group tags together and it also allows us to apply styling to all of the children of the parent container. So that was a lot to take in. In the next class, we're gonna talk about CSS, which will make this a lot easier to do. So hopefully you guys learned something new. Before I end the lesson, please go to w3schools.com and then go to references and go to CSS. And feel free to play around with these different styles. There's a lot of them, so knock yourself out. Make sure to like the video and subscribe so that way you won't miss out on the next lesson.